Hi, everybody. Um, go ahead and make sure all of you are set up to enjoy our webinar today. Our chat has been disabled um, and we will facilitate Q&A shortly uh, following our presentation. Um, so go ahead and get settled and we're going to go and get started with our presentation today. So welcome to the Penn State Berks Lionside Chats. My name is Sonia Delacueto and I am one of three Lionside Chat moderators working along Don Pfeiffer Wright and Dr. Ryan Hassler. Come on in and welcome to our campus. We're so glad that you could join us today. Before we get started, we did wanna share that you should please feel free to submit questions throughout the program via the Q&A feature. And once we're done with our panelists, we will go ahead and have a discussion. Um, we're also gonna be recording today's session so you can revisit the topic or even share the experience with other friends and family. So now I am excited to introduce Becky Eckenrode. Let me stop sharing my screen here and being greedy. And Becky is going to share um, that we are somebody as part of the FYE series, Why Burks Works. Um, Becky, so uh, thank you so much for joining us today um, and sharing why current Penn State Burks students have chosen to complete their degree at Burks rather than transitioning to University Park. And it looks like we have several of those students with us. <laughs> um, so go ahead, take it away, Becky and our students. Thank you so much, Sonia, and thank you, um, Lineside Chat Committee, for allowing us to do this um, really important presentation and one that's really close to my heart. Um, some of you may know um, me through the admissions process, and the reason I say that this is really close to my heart is because I chose to do all four years of my study at Penn State Berks, um, and that was not my original intention. Um, I had all intentions of going on to University Park, but really fell in love with the Penn State Berks campus, which is why I chose to stay here to complete my degree and ultimately work here because I just found my home at Penn State Berks and it is a really special place to be. But I don't want you to hear that just from me. Today, you have um, some of our Lion Ambassadors um, who have also chosen to do all four years at Penn State Berks here with me. Um, and the one thing I am gonna ask you all to do is if you are watching this as a webinar, make sure that you're watching this um, in gallery view because I'd like, to, um, I'd like for you to be able to see all of the different um, speakers we have today. And we're gonna get started and I'm going to ask all of our students to introduce themselves, where they're from, what major they are and um, what year also. So let's start with TJ. Hi everyone, I'm uh, TJ Scott. I'm a second year hospitality management major and I'm from Flowertown, PA. So it's about an hour from campus. It's like right outside of Philadelphia. So. Thank you, Amanda. Um, hi everyone, my name is Amanda. I am a fourth year here at Penn State Berks. I'm from Northampton, PA, which is also about like an hour from campus. Um, I'm majoring in Rehabilitation and Human Services with a minor in Criminal Justice. Katie. Hey guys, I'm Katie Anders. I'm a third year here at Berks and my major is Business Marketing Management and I'm from Boyertown, PA. So that's like 40 minutes away from campus, not too far. Safi. Hello everyone, my name is Safi. I am a third year biology major with a concentration in genetics and development. Um, I have a minor in psychology too, and I am from Ephrata, which is in Lancaster County and about 30 minutes away from here. Thank you, Safi. And last but not least, Brian. Hi everyone, my name is Brian. I am a third year biology major with a concentration in uh, genetics and developmental biology. Um, I live uh, about 10 minutes away in uh, West Lawn, Pennsylvania, which is near the Sinking Spring area. Excellent. Thank you so much. So first question, and just a heads up to our audience today, we're going to make this more of a conversation, um, not a formal presentation, because I feel like it's best to hear this information from the students who are living it currently. Um, so the first question I have for everyone is, Remind us again of your major and why did you first choose Penn State Berks? TJ. Uh, so my major is hospitality management and the reason I chose Berks 
Probably because I toured here. I fell in love with it, like, when I toured. Um, and I also didn't want to go to Maine and have to deal with 40,000 people. So, at the, and, like, the connections I've built here also have kind of the reason I'm going to stay here probably, but we'll talk about that later. So, yeah. Amanda. All right, so like I said before, my major is rehabilitation and human services with a minor in criminal justice. Um, I wasn't gonna major in rehabilitation, but once I got here, I got introduced to like so many new majors. So I was like, that's exactly what I wanna do. So I actually ended up switching my sophomore year, but um, I chose Berks because I actually accepted, like I decided to come here before I even toured, but I'm happy I did. Um, but I just had like heard like really good things about Penn State Berks, like from my friends and stuff like that, that had already gone here. And then once I toured, I was like, yep, this is the place. And what really got me was like the smaller kind of like environment. But I was supposed to do the two plus two program, but we'll get into that later as well. <laughs> Katie. Okay, so again, I'm a business marketing management major. And what brought me to Berks, uh, I came for a tour. And actually, I know a successful business person who went to Berks. Um, so that was really cool. Like, I was like, okay, like, that was the person that was like, hey, go do a tour here. Um, see what you think. And the second I got here, I was like, wow, this is an amazing campus. Like, it just feels like home. And right away, I felt that. And I was like, oh, this is nice. Like, I really like that. Um, also, what some of the others were saying, you know, uh, main campus is really big. There's a lot of people, and I wasn't really looking for that. Um, and here at Berks, you can get to know your professors, which is really cool. So, like right now, I'm in a class with like smaller classes, and I love that. Um, so, yeah. Also, the community that we have here. Like, I met one of my advisors like the first day um, on a tour, and he was really nice. He's like, "You should come here. Like, I could see you here." You know. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Katie. Safi. Um, so I initially decided to come to Berks because my cousins had gone here and they had a lot of good things to say about the campus. Um, it was close to home and it was also cheap, cheaper than going to UP directly. So I decided that, oh, okay, I'm going to do two years here and then I'll do two years at UP and then I'll go to graduate school or med school. Um, so I was thinking long term that it would be a good idea to like start at a cheaper campus. Um, so that's why I came here initially. Great, thank you, Safi. And Brian. So uh, so previously I said I was from West Lawn, PA, but before I go to college, I was actually from Texas. So making the big decision to move to PA and choosing specifically Penn State Brooks is because I not only, one, have a, have a home here with my dad, but also, I was given a tour, not formally, but it was I was given a tour by an alumnus and I immediately fell in love with the small classroom size, but also like the family aspect of Penn State Brooks. Um, and I feel like I could thrive in that kind of environment if I choose Penn State Brooks and also because of um, the cheaper option of starting here. So initially I, I wanted to start here as a doing the two plus two program, um, but we'll get into that. <laughs> later. Honestly, I think we should we should head there because it seems like a lot of you had that same kind of mindset that you were planning on doing the two plus two. Um, so I'm interested in hearing why. Why did you choose to stay? And if you can go in any order, just make sure that you um, don't cut each other off. I guess I'll go first. Um, so yeah, my original plan was two plus two. I didn't know what major I wanted to do. Um, so I was like, all right, I'll go inside it. I'll figure it out and I'll do, just go up to Maine. Cause I, I always wanted to go to Maine just kind of for the football games, not going to lie. Like that, that was a big reason why. Um, but then I got involved on campus here and I just kind of fell in love with that. And I didn't really see the point in leaving my involvements to start fresh at a new campus. So. Katie. Katie, you want to go next? Um, I also was going to do the two plus two program. I kind of had like the same mindset as TJ. Like I'm going to go here first, like kind of branch out of my comfort zone um, away from home, but like still kind of close because I still dormed on camp on campus. And then I kind of got a feel for it, made some friends, um, really like stepped out of my comfort zone, but not like too much, but like to the point where I was, I was still like 
applying myself and like gaining new experiences, which was really nice. Um, and I made really close connections to the professors, which is really important, who helped me like, are helping me get internships now and jobs and like volunteer, all that good stuff. That's really important for when you get out of college. And like, sometimes when you go from two years at one campus and then you transition, it kind of makes it a little bit harder. Not that it can't be done, it can be done, but I just think that that was like the best decision for myself personally. And I'm glad that I stayed, so. Okay, so I can go next. Um, I, yeah, I was gonna do the two plus two program too. Um, honestly, when I came here though, I kind of had a feeling. I was like, you know, I really like this campus. Like, this is kind of where I belong, you know? So, and I thought when I came here, I was like, all right, this is gonna be a stepping stone. Like, I'll kind of feel it out, see what it's like. I fell in love with it. <laughs> like, honestly, like everybody else said, like I got really involved. Um, there's a lot of clubs here. I know when I first started, we had like 150, um, which is like a lot. And so at first it was overwhelming. I was like, yes, I want to sign up for every single thing. Um, but then I got offered a leadership position like on campus. So with our THON organization, that was my first step. And I was like, okay, I'll be like in a leadership role here. And then our campus activities board, they offered me a role on that. So I was like, all right, here we go. Like kind of getting involved. And then by my second year, I was president of our campus activities board. I was a resident assistant um, <laughs> and an outreach captain for THON. And I was on a bunch of different committees. So here I was like second year in college already involved. I was like, all right, cool. This is great. And then I just fell in love with it. You know, like I didn't want to leave the roles that I'm in and the great community that we have, even during a pandemic, we managed to still have a great community. Like within the res halls, we still had students here. We were still, you know, just as good, you know, and I mean, yeah, it was virtual, but we made it work. And I think that's amazing because at a bigger campus, you might not still have those connections, you know, so, but there's no way of knowing, but at least from my experience, I really liked it. And the people that were around, I got to really know. And now that we're back in person, it's like, I still see those people around, you know, so, and it's an even bigger community now, which is amazing. Like I'm getting to see it coming back and being different and dynamic, which is great. So and along with that, the organization piece, you can start a club here. And I know so many people that are doing that and I'm helping them along the way, like doing that. And that's such like a fulfilling thing because then you get to see other people getting involved, like aside from everything else. So, and also like classes. Um, like I said, I do have really small classes and I get to know my professors one-on-one. -on -one. So like Amanda said, they can literally help you get internships and stuff. Like, they'll really be amazing and kind of help you figure out what do you want to do when you grow up? Like, yeah, you have your major and you know what field, but what specific jobs are you looking for? Like they can be the ones to kind of guide you and do that. So that's why it works. <laughs> um, so I initially came here as a pre-medicine uh, major, which is a two plus two program. You can start at any campus, but then you have to finish a UP. Um, but then within like my first few weeks, I talked to a bunch of professors and they saw potential in me and then they would like tell me to like pursue this opportunity, pursue this opportunity. Um, like one of my professors encouraged me to apply to Stryers. Um, I didn't even know that you could be a Stryer scholar on a Commonwealth campus. So little things like that, like people notice you here. Um, it's, it's easier to stand out in a smaller campus. And then um, my other professor was like, okay, like why are you doing pre-medicine? You can do get the same degree or you can get the same education, with, uh, fulfill your requirements with a biology degree. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. And I don't have to go to UP after two years. And, you know, back when I switched or when I decided to switch my major, I didn't know that there was going to be a pandemic. Um, I didn't know that like my second and third year would look so different from my first year. But I'm glad I stayed here because I, I don't know, it just it feels right. It feels right here. All right, so um, I actually share a lot of similarities with, with what Safi said. Um, when I first came here, initially I wanted to do, do the two plus two because I wanted to do a bio major with an art minor, um, with, a, with a fine art minor. But um, when I got to this campus, I performed pretty well academically and the, the my, my professors see potential in me as well. So um with one one with one 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 of the english professors she helped me um, go through a publication process where i'm now 
a published writer. Uh, I had one of my essay published. Um, and also the potential, like I'm also right now and currently in research. So it's, it's these uh, connections that I have made with the professor that um, helped me to, to, to make the, the decision to stay here um, because I feel like I could thrive more in this kind of, in, in, in a smaller environment. Um, and I think, yeah. And also another driving factor is that um, cost. Since I'm a commuter, it's, it's so much better to like save up and go to a small campus where you still perform, where, where I can still do, where I can still thrive academically and socially with, um, you know, the clubs, the various clubs on campus, like, and getting involved as a line ambassador, as an orientation leader, um, while also saving money for the future in case I want to go to grad school or want to do something, you know, after graduation. So it's, it's also, it's, so it's both um, the personal connections I have here, but also long-term planning for myself. Well, thank you all for answering that question. So a lot of you talked about influences, um, whether it was a person who influenced you or an experience. This is your chance to give a shout out to it, if it's a person or to talk about that one experience that really stood out to you as being that that time that you decided, like you, you can look back at that, that specific experience or that conversation with that person and say, this is how I know I'm staying at Berks. Anybody have any that you? Oh, Katie's uh, TJ. Yeah, yeah, TJ. yeah, I'll go first. Um, so probably the, all right, there's two. Uh, uh, yeah, there's two things. So first thing was when I got nominated to become a line ambassador to apply for it, I was like, okay, this would be cool. Like, why not try this out? So now I'm a line ambassador. So that, that was that. And then the second thing was Felicia Nelson helped me. So she recommended me to do the chair of special events for Campus Activities Board this year, which I'm currently doing. And that also kind of gave me a reason to stay um, because I didn't want to ditch that like next year and just like start fresh at Maine. Like I just didn't see the point in doing that. So I just thought like kind of stick, like I've always been like, I, I, I don't like change. So like that would really mess me up, like going up the main and losing all my involvements and then to start fresh. So, yeah. Yo, Katie, you know, you, you nodded your head. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Last year, because it was during a pandemic, I was kind of all over the place. And I was like, okay, wait, do I want to go up to University Park? Like, is this a thing that I want? And I went to my advisor and he's like, yeah, yeah, go up to University Park. He's like, you don't want to stay here now. Like, you can be a finance major up there. And I was like, I don't even want to be a finance major. Like, and so then I was having like a little like college crisis. I was like, I think I want to stay at Berks. But because my advisor said that, I was like, hmm, like, should I, you know? So I was tossing it back and forth and talking to like many different advisors, like my family members, like just kind of thinking. And in my heart, I knew I was like, I want to stay at first, like, you know, and my one advisor, it was I don't know if you guys know, but anyway, she was the residence life coordinator and she sat down with me and we we're having our one on one and we we're talking about like the res halls, you know, and like residents and stuff. And she's like, hey, Katie, what are your plans like for next year? Like, are you staying at Berks? And I was like, I think so. She's like what do you mean? What do you mean you think so? And I was like, well, I don't know. Like there's a lot of opportunities at University Park and like, I don't really know. She, and here's what she said. She was like, put it in a hat, put the two names in a hat, pull one out and see what you feel. So, and I thought about it and I was like, there's no need. I was like, I know what I'm going to feel. I was like, I want Burks, you know? And right in that moment, I was like, you know what? This is what I want. And like, I knew it. And honestly, it's amazing here. So yeah. So that's that's my how I knew. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Does anyone else have any experience? So welcome, G, by the way. I will have you introduce yourself in just a second, okay? Um, we are talking a little bit about that aha moment um, where you get where you can shout out a professor or staff member who helped influence you to choosing the major that you are currently in and um, why you chose to stay at Berks. Brian, did you um have something to add? Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, previously, I, I mentioned an, an English professor that I had. So her name it was uh, her name is Dr. Holly Ryan. 
Um, she teaches the honor section for English 30 and English 202. And I vividly remember, you know, oh, because every time after class, I would walk down the path with her, like behind Larson, all the way to Franco, just to talk about assignments, but also um, developing that one-on-one -on -one connection with the with my professor. And it was after I had, I had submitted an essay that she saw potential in, and she was thinking that I should publish it. So I, after I decided to submit for publishing, we had talked uh, several times already. And we, she said that she, she sees me as um, a driven student. So, and she sees potential and she, and she made me feel like I could thrive in, in Berks where I could do all these things in, I could, like I had already about to be published as an undergrad. So um, I was kind of, I guess, surprised, like surprised, but also happy that she said that and that, that it, may, it made me want to stay at Berks because I know that I can do so much more now in, in a smaller environment rather than, you know, going up to UP and have to start competing in, uh, in with other um, students. Um, which is, I guess it's, 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 it's a healthy thing, but it's, I think it's better for me in the long run if I stay here. So that's one of, and that's, she, uh, she's one of the reasons why I, I decided to stay. Thank you for sharing that. Any others have that aha moment or person they wanna shout out? Go ahead, Sophie. Yeah, so I mentioned the professor, um, my biology professor, Dr. Wong, and then my advisor, Dr. Shibley, like all these professors, they like, saw me and they appreciated the hard work that I was putting in their classes. And then one other professor who kind of like discovered me would be Dr. or Professor Felker. She was my research, I'm sorry, she was my biology lab um, instructor. And I like did labs, you know, I, I really don't feel like I'm good at labs because I want like 100% yield and that never happens. But um, she saw like how meticulous I was and how much like attention I paid to details and like tried my best. So she asked me to uh, be a research assistant for her and Dr. Meisovic. And um, that was my freshman year uh, fall semester. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I didn't know that I could start research now. You know, usually you see people talking or, you know, start talking about research in their junior or senior year. So um, I started working in their lab uh, my spring semester or freshman year, and I've been doing it since. I spent all last summer doing it, and I love it. And I think I will publish sometime soon too. Um, and yeah, so like they see you here. And at UP, you are with like 500, 600 other kids in your class. And it's not a bad thing. Like Brian said, it is healthy in some ways, right? You get pushed more maybe in a bigger campus, but sometimes it's nice to just like feel appreciated. <laughs> and that does happen a lot at Berks. Thank you, um, so if we don't, if you don't mind, G, could you introduce yourself, your major, what year you're in? Hi, everybody. I'm G. Um, I'm a senior here at Berks. Um, well, fourth year. And my major is kinesiology. Um, to begin, like, my major coming into Berks was not kinesiology. Um, I originally came here as a criminal justice major. Um, I didn't even know Berks existed. I was originally planning on going to Harrisburg or Maine. Um, and after finding out that Berks had such a great program for criminal justice, that's why I came here. Um, and after a long road of switching my major back and forth and finally figuring out where I was meant to be um, within my major, I switched to kinesiology. And I was still gonna do the two plus two. And just being with my professors, really having that one-on-one, -on -one, that close relationship with them, um, it made me realize that Berks is my home. And it just kind of also stems back from when I was on my tour at Berks. Um, I cried and turned around to my parents during the tour and said, this is where I want to be. And 
I know, I don't know why that was like my aha moment, but that was so early on. And I think just going down the road, I really realized that I made the right decision coming to Berks. Um, and also not to like knock main campus whatsoever, but I have a couple friends up there and I talked to them and asked them like, oh, cause I'm doing research and I'm doing my internship classes. And I said, oh, like, how's all that going for you? I'm sure it's tough. And they were like, what are you talking about? And I said, what do you mean? What am I talking about? It's, it's a requirement for Berks for specific majors and they don't have to do any of that. So they're not getting the same experience that I'm getting here. And I'm just so grateful that I chose to stay at Berks. That's a great transition. Um, and is actually one of the questions I have written down that I want to, I want each of you to talk a little bit about not just the classroom experience, but some of those outside of class experiences that you're getting like internships, research opportunities, if you don't mind talking to a little bit about what you're doing or what you're planning on doing with your major as far as research as well as um, as well as internships. So anybody can go first. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll go first. Um, so right now I'm in the process of applying for an internship at the Reading Phillies because um, I've always wanted to work in sports and especially with my major, I have the opportunity to do that because it's mainly anything with the hospitality industry and that includes like sports and entertainment. So I'm currently in the process of doing that. So looking forward to it. Awesome, thank you. Um, I can talk a little bit about um, what I'm trying to get into. Um, so I wanna put a little plug for like the services that we actually have here to offer at Berks, which is career services, which I'm very like thankful for. One of the reasons like why I stayed here to my sophomore year was because I attended our career fair, which like, if you guys don't know what it is, it's just like a fair that like different companies come from like all around, like not just writing, like literally so many different places. And you can have like interviews on the spot, which is super helpful. And like, you bring your resume and you just get to know like a bunch of companies to get to see like what you want to do and to know about them. So I got like um, kind of like an internship opportunity with state police, which was really, really cool. And um, one of my professors like helped me with that as well. Like as I had like a really good connection with her and she just like helped me out through so much. And in high school, I was kind of like very like hard headed. Like I didn't want help from anybody. I don't even remember going to my advisor or anything for help. But like once I got to college, I was like, wow, this is nice, like having someone to actually help you out through the process and um, guide you like through all of that. So I just think it's like really important to stay in contact with people. And like I said, career services, like in terms of resume, cover letter, all that stuff, they really help you like, just if you don't know what you wanna do, they literally have so many options too. Like I'm getting ready to apply to internships and I was like, where do I start? Like, I don't know one single place around here. And I went there and they literally just gave me like a whole list and they were like, here's what you have to do. Like, now you just gotta go out there and like apply yourself, so, yeah. I guess I could go next. Um, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Outside of the classroom, so internships, any kind of research, what type of research have you done? Things like that. Okay. So uh, this so this year is the first semester I've gone to research. I'm currently doing research with Dr. D'Angelo. Um, he's in the uh, bi uh, biochemistry lab. And we're doing something with um, changing cell signaling in flies and, start, uh, and uh, manip like manipulating the starvation um, sig uh, signal and see how that affects me their metabolism. Um, but overall, when I first came to Berks, like ever since I decided to go to college, is that I want to pursue medical illustration after graduation. Um, and that's initially why I had chosen uh, UP, uh, because I can do that bio major and then that, art, that minor in art. Um, but then after my first few semester, I realized that it's possible to do interdisciplinarity work here at Penn State Berks through the Shy Honors uh, College. So um, I guess that it's, it's just, it made me, it solidify my decision to like, okay, I'm gonna stay here because I can be a Shire Scholar here. I can do what I want to do. Uh, I can prepare the work that I need to do um, to become a medical illustrator um, when I go to graduate, like eventually when I go to graduate school. 
So it's, I feel like all we have here at Berks, all we have to offer here, they have it up there at UP. And why, why move up there when I can, you know, save money, but also, and still maintain that um, personal connections I have with not only the students, but also the professor and still excel do well here academically it's, it seems like a, a perfect package so that's 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 a major reason i can go next um i've had internship experience and i also have undergraduate research experience i am a psychology major so those kind of things just kind of came with my major and i actually chose to stay at works because of the psychology major that we have here um, my first internship i worked in a memory care unit in a residential community and I really loved it and it really solidified kind of my job choice that I want to pursue after I graduate. And my current internship is as a teaching assistant for the first year seminar classes and the um, psychology 301 class, which is the beginning of undergraduate research here. And hopefully next semester I will return back to um, helping out in a memory care unit at my current job that I have back in Lancaster. So I'm really excited for that and I'm currently pursuing that. But my undergraduate research um, actually got finished up last semester in my spring of my junior year. Um, my research was on death anxiety and religiosity and how they impacted each other. And I found it really interesting, not only because I got to talk to the students at Penn State Berks, but I also got to talk to people outside of Berks and see their experiences with it as well. And it also brought me a lot closer to all of my professors that I had. I would have never had the opportunity to be a teaching assistant if I hadn't have made such a strong connection with my professor. So I think that's another bonus of being at Berks is just having those strong connections to your professors and being able to do things that you wouldn't normally get to do at another campus where you're just a number. Here you're an individual and your professor knows your name and they offer you a lot of opportunities that at some other colleges you wouldn't really get the chances to do. Thank you so much, Jordan, for jumping right in. If you don't mind, could you introduce yourself, where you're from and your year? Yes, I'm so sorry. I was on tour. Um, no, I appreciate you jumping on. Thank you. <laughs> yes, um, my name is Jordan. I am an applied psychology major. I am from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I currently live in Reading in an apartment with G, obviously. Um, and I'm a senior, so I'll be graduating in the spring. Thank you. Um, but I can hop on and talk about um, my internship experience. So I've also completed two internships. Um, my first one was last year in the fall. Uh, I actually had an internship with a physical therapy, um, a physical therapy place. It was called CPRS. It's located um, towards Lancaster, which is where I'm from as well. Um, I failed to mention where I was from earlier, so I apologize. Um, but that is where um, my first internship was. And it was really nice just making those connections with the physical therapist, with the PTAs, um, with just the staff in general and kind of getting my name out there. And they even told me um, after college and I go to get my PT license that I am more than welcome back. And hopefully they would love to um, give me a job, um, which was really great. And at the time I really loved it because I thought I was going, to, I wanted to become a PT, but now I'm kind of leaning towards PA um, because of my other internship experience. Um, at Willow Valley, which is where I work. And it's also, it's specialized with geriatrics and it's um, at Lakeside and it's basically a skilled care living. So I was helping them with their mobility and seeing how like their dementia, like their brains are just, it's really bad and it really impacts them, their um, physical, their, like their physical abilities. And I was able to experience that. And like, personally, I really want to, um, be able to help them with that, not just through PT, but also through like other experiences. Cause like they need more than just PT. Um, and I was able to realize that because all my professors, like they kind of pushed me and were like, maybe don't go and get an internship at the same place you already had, try a different place. And because of them, I was really able to broaden my horizon um, and just see all the opportunities that are really out there. And like how Brian was saying, like for, I think, I think, sorry, I think it was Amanda. I apologize. Um, how Amanda was saying they gave, they gave me a list of like all these different places for internships and I didn't even choose them. I chose two different places that weren't even on the list. And um, my professors like really helped me and pushed me to choose places that weren't even just given to me um, because it really does get your foot in the door, so to say. And they're just super supportive and helpful with whatever you want to do. 
Thank you all so much for sharing that. And gee, I, I have so many more questions that I'm going to ask you outside of this lion side chat because I never, I didn't realize that those were where you did your internships, and that's really awesome. Um, so let's see. Since G mentioned what she's thinking she wants to do, I want to know what all of your career goals are. If you um, know. I plan on going to med school um, and I am in my junior year, so I still haven't applied or anything yet, but I plan on doing that soon. <laughs> um, so my career goals, I'm, Oddly enough, I bet all of you can't believe it, but me and G are very similar. I love geriatrics. I love to work with geriatrics. I also work at Willow Valley. Um, so my goal is to actually help with um, the memory care unit admissions. So screening them, um, helping out with families, almost in like a social worker position where I assist the families and moving their loved one in, but also assist their loved one into the process of getting into the memory care unit. As I mentioned before, um, I'm pursuing medical il illustration after graduation. And for any of you who don't know who who do, like who do, like who doesn't know what medical illustration is, I basically am the artist that um, produce um, images that you see in scientific textbooks. So, you know, cell diagrams, action potential, um, neuromuscular junction, any sort of stuff uh, like that. I I will be providing that image. Um, sometimes I work close with researchers or um, textbook publishing companies. So I'm going in that direction right now. <laughs> um, can I just point something out? Uh, just kind of being in here and listening to the line side chat, especially if you just started at Berks, it might be a little intimidating, so to say. I know personally, like if I was a freshman coming into Berks, um, I'd be a little intimidated because it seems like everybody has it figured out. You could ask any of us. I'm sure we are completely lost and we have no idea what's going on. We're just taking it day by day, maybe even hour by hour. Um, and we're just letting the opportunities, the doors are just opening upon us because it works, honestly. And we're just flowing. Like we're, there is nothing set in stone. We are just gliding right through it. And like all you guys watching, like you guys have so much potential. You don't even know it. Like just spread your wings, right? Like honestly, and I know that sounds really cliche or stupid, but you just have to open up and really see what's in front of you. See all the opportunities that are there because they are yours to take. First, I want to say, wow, G, that was really nice. Um, it kind of explained exactly how I feel too. Like my first year, I was like, where do I even start? Like, it sounds like everybody is so put together and has basically their life set, but it's not what it looks like. Um, everyone is taking it day by day, but um, at like career wise, I kind of want to go into like juvenile probation. So right now I'm in the process. I just applied to one of my internship sites, which is Abraxas Youth and Family Services. So I'm kind of excited to get to like provide, you know, youth at risk with like programs and services that they can need. And what's cool is like they kind of do like court proceedings and all that kind of stuff. I've had like jobs and internships like in the past, but nothing really related to like criminal justice. So I'm really happy that I get to like kind of get my foot in there and get some experience through like a requirement like of my major, which is cool. I guess I'll go next. Uh, my career goal is probably, I've mentioned this earlier, is probably the work for a sports team. Um, preferably the Eagles or the Sixers, is the, those are the two choices. But um, no, so right now, like I said, I'm in the process of applying for an internship for the Reading Phillies. So if I get that, that'd be huge for like my experience with that industry. And uh, yeah, I have no idea what I want to do in that sports industry. Just like work for a sports team. Seems fun. So yeah, love sports. Yeah. So then there's me. Um, so I am trying to go into sales and marketing. Um, my dream was always to work for Disney. So I'm, I don't know if you guys can see Stitch in my background though, but, <laughs> but yeah, that was always the goal. Um, and as of right now, I'm looking to get an internship. Uh, I have a couple companies I'm applying to. So just trying to get some sales uh, and some marketing experience. So yeah. Also, I'm going to have to hop off the call real quick because I do have to do a line ambassador thing. So thanks, guys. It was great being on here.
Okay, so I have one last question. And G, you almost stole the question with your answer, actually. No, it was phenomenal. That was a phenomenal answer. Um, my question was, what advice would you give students who are in their freshman year who might be thinking about University Park or confused about University Park versus staying at Berks? What advice? Do you have any? If, if you don't, it's quite all right. If you do, let us know. Um, honestly, I would just ask yourself, like, where do you see yourself? Do you want to be here? Do you feel like you're at home when you're at Berks? Or do you, are you craving something that's a little different? And like, if you are, there's no fault in that. Like you can go to UP, plenty of people do. Um, but from just like my experience personally, I've seen way more people just stay at Berks because that's their home. And they really do realize that. So I think you just have to be true to yourself and whatever you're feeling is not the, it's the right answer. It's not gonna be wrong. I also will just hop on since we're on the same <laughs> mic. Um, I, I see a lot of hesitation in wanting to change majors sometimes because what you come into college, you might figure out it's not what you wanna do and that's totally fine. I changed my major three times and I got to where I got from changing it three times and I wouldn't have been happy if I had just stayed with what I picked my freshman year or even when I was in high school what I picked to come into college because it, sometimes it does work out for some people that way but all there a lot of the times actually it doesn't mm -hmm. and you just can't be scared to kind of branch out and if you think you're really going to like something try it and you don't have to specifically change your major but maybe take a class or two that you can take and get the experience and then just don't be scared to change a major and don't think that it's going to ruin your college career because there's plenty of people who change majors more than I did, more than three times, four times, five times, and they're still doing okay. They're still going to graduate, but they're graduating with something that they want to do rather than something that they force themselves to do. I would probably say like weigh out your pros and your cons, like, like for both, like for Maine or for Berks or like any other campus, like just see like where you at, where like where you're at, where you want to be and what is going to like kind of make you happy like Gian Jordan said like change is okay like don't be scared of it like change is okay and it's also good too uh yeah I would definitely say to go with your gut on certain things like that's what I did and it worked out um I would also say if you want to do something on campus like get involved get involved and if you get involved you might like it here more than you do now um so I don't know. Yeah, that. And I'm um, also the college experience is what you make of it. It's not like what the school gives you. It's like you what you do, like through internships, through classes, through getting involved, like making connections with people. It's not like given to you. You have to do that yourself. So that's my advice. I would say um, think about why you are um, thinking about going to UP or staying at Berks, right? What are your reasons? Um, at the end of the day, you are going to graduate from Penn State University. They're not going to say you graduated from Berks campus or you graduated from UP. Um, and if you really want to go to UP for the social aspect, I mean, you should do, definitely do that if that's what you want. But know that there is a social life here, too. And if you want to go for the games or something, um, Penn State Berks usually like takes a bus and it takes the students there for like the big games. So you won't be missing anything like that. But really ask yourself, what are your reasons for like going to UP if that's what you were thinking or you came um, into college thinking? Yeah, and I agree with most of what Safi says. Um, and also don't, don't think that you have to either stay here at Berks or go to UP because you have to. Um, really personalize your your classes or your experience around your like into your education what do you want to get out of your education um or what or where do you want to be by the end of your you know your associate uh years or your bachelor years it's what what do you hope to learn or to become um i guess like other than academics like so and then uh, and then also um talk like right now most of you are freshmen first year um talk to your professor really really make that connection with your professor and they're there to not only help you academically but they'll also guide you through your college experience so 
Thank you all so much for such insightful answers to these questions. I think at this time we can see if anyone in our audience has any questions and feel free to put that in the Q&A. Absolutely. Thank you all so very much. And I would um, echo uh, Becky's sentiments. And please, if you have any questions right now, like these are some great stories we've heard today. Um, and we have a wealth of knowledge um, joining us. So please go ahead and feel free to submit those questions in the chat. Um, I was sitting here and every question I wanted to ask ended up being answered. But this is more of a generic question that I have um, for our students, if any, like one or two of you could comment on this, what advice in general would you have for students who are struggling with their college selection? Okay, so not even like we're not, we're just talking generic advice to help students who are either on this quest or thinking about starting this quest shortly. I would definitely say uh, just go with your gut, uh, go with what you feel is right um and just follow your heart uh yeah follow your dreams i don't know yeah that tips up um i would say definitely like your first year try to like we all take like general education classes and like some some people are required to take like certain ones but you have a choice too like you get to pick like different like horror movie classes like just different like types of topics that you never thought that you would like or enjoy just kind of branch out a little bit and take them and that could lead you into like something that you want to major in that you never even thought of so I would just say like definitely get out of your comfort zone anybody else Okay, um, I have one question um, that came in and the question, as a risk analysis major, does anyone in the room have plan Bs? Do you mean plan Bs as in like, if we don't get into our like career or graduate, of, graduate school of choice? Yeah, no, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I want to go to med school and like it's very competitive, very, very competitive. So I've realized that if I don't get into med school straight away, I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to take a gap year and I'm going to um, try to get as much research, internship, um, all that experience down. And I'm going to take my MCAT again and try to get a better score. I'm just going to stick with this because I've wanted to become a doctor for a very long time. Ever since I could like remember, people ask you like, oh, what do you wanna be when you grow up? I always said doctor. So I'm not gonna give up on my plan. So my plan B is to wait it out, I guess. <laughs> um, so my plan B is sort of interesting because it's not related to my plan A at all. Um, so, you know, throughout the course of my time here at Berks and also at home, I develop a liking for baking. So my plan B, if, you know, all else doesn't work out, I'll get into the kitchen and work my way up. Hope, I mean, I, I, I want to gain experience at, and become a pastry chef as plan B, but uh, it's also a pretty serious contender right now with plan A. So, you know, as I said before, I, it seems like I know I have my heart set on medical illustration, but in reality, I'm I don't know what I'm doing, to be honest. Like, I'm still trying to see how this next um, few semesters is going to turn out and who I have, who I become in the future. Like, what am I going to decide to do? So, um, it's confusing right now. <laughs> don't don't worry, you're not alone. For me, I would say I don't even have a plan B. It's probably non-existent right now. Um, I'm just kind of like riding with whatever I can do and what I can control in the moment um like with internship applications and like stuff that i'm interested in um i would just basically say if i don't like let's say i get an internship with like the running phillies for example and i don't like it i don't know what i want to do with my career i mean i have no idea so I'll, I'll figure it out i mean i got time so but yeah the goal is to work for a sports team but if that doesn't work out then we'll see what happens <laughs> Great, thank you. That was a wonderful question. Thank you to our audience for throwing that out there. 
Um, I would just, I, I think we're going to go ahead because we don't have any other questions today. I want to thank everybody so much for your, uh, their, your time today. Phenomenal stories from our Penn State Berks students who stayed, um, uh, and we're so glad that you did, especially I kept thinking throughout this presentation um, that I definitely learned even more reasons why Berks works for so many of us. But I think the true theme that I heard was like that ability to be vulnerable, right? And to say, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing, but you know, I'm learning and we're all learning together. So I got the chills. Thanks so much today for all of your stories and for your honesty. And I'd also like to offer a special thank you to everybody out in our audience today for, join, for joining us for the Lion Side Chat We Are series. As you click out of the webinar, you're gonna re receive access to a survey. Please take the few minutes um, required to complete the survey to let us know what you thought about today's chat and perhaps even offer some ideas for future chats as well. You're encouraged to reach out to us via email and we remind you to keep checking our website as we are having more and more chats um, joining or more interest in offering chats. And speaking of next, next chats, we actually have free chats slated as we enter the month of October. So our next chat is we are advised and it'll be right here in the same space <laughs> one week from today on Monday, October 4th during common hour. And we will be hosting Mr. Michael Stella who will help us learn how your GPA is calculated, along with tips for what to do as a student, as well as stories of what not to do as a student regarding your first semester of college. So be sure to come back soon and meet with other faculty, staff, or students to learn about our exciting majors and experiences that you can be a part of here at Penn State Berks. So stay safe, Berks and beyond, signing off until next time. This has been the Penn State Berks Lion Side Chats. Thank you everybody for joining us. You did so amazing. <laughs> All right, stay safe and have a great day, okay? Thank you, bye-bye.